I have a confession to make. I suck at art. As a software developer, anytime I'm working on a new game, I always run into the issue when I need 3D models for that game. I pretty much have two options at my disposal. I can spend a bunch of money on assets that someone else made, or I can attempt to make them on my own. And neither of those are really an option because, let's be honest, if it's anything more complex than a rock, it's gonna look like crap if I do it. So I thought to myself the other day, is there a way that I can make 3D models with code? Now for my latest project, I needed some trees, so I thought I would try my hand at creating a procedural tree generator. And this is the result. So in this video, I want to do a bit of a deeper dive into how I created this procedural tree generator. And hopefully that can help you when you're trying to create assets for your game and give you ideas about doing procedural generation for your assets. So here is the procedural tree generator that I built. Now, it's not perfect. It's not, I would say, professional grade, but it gets the job done for what I need. So let's walk through this a little bit. I'll show you some of the parameters. There's over 35 tunable parameters on this. And best of all, I'm releasing this for free, so I'll put a link to both the source code and this demo in the description so you can check it out for yourself. So let's get into it. As you can see on the right-hand side here, I have these drop-downs with these different parameters. Starting off at the top here, we can control the seed. So that basically is the seed for the random number generator. That allows us to pick any one random tree. There's 65,000 different seeds that you can pull from. Um, I also added in a growth feature, which um, it's kind of cool for watching trees grow over time. So if I check this box and then just wait a little bit, now we can see the tree growing up from a sapling, the branches start to come out and then the leaves grow. Now I can turn this off and we can change that maturity to any value that we want. So this could be cool if you wanted some more immature looking trees in your game. Now moving on, here's parameters for the trunk. So I can set the, the color of the trunk to anything that I want that gets overlaid on the texture. And I also have an option for flat shading so you can get a more um, low poly look if you wanted that. And then the, the big modifiers here, you can change the overall length of the tree trunk and also the radius of the tree trunk. And that kind of propagates down to the rest of the branches, which get thicker as well as the tree trunk grows. You can also add a bit of a flare to the tree trunk, which um, it's kind of a, a poor simulation of tree roots spreading out. So let's set these back to some reasonable values here. And let's move on to the branch settings. First of all, here's the levels. This algorithm is recursive. So first it places the tree trunk, and then the next set of branches, and then it branches off, off of that. So the levels is controlling how many times it's branching. So you can see one branch is just the trunk and then we're getting that secondary set of branches. Um, I like to leave the set to around three or four for the best results. And then you can control where the branches start. If you want them to start really early on, low on the trunk, or if you want them to start very high up, you can get kind of different looks based on how you set that. And then the stop controls the end range for that. Now, min and max children, that controls how many child branches can be spawned off of any one branch. So if I set this to something low, you get these Dr. Seuss looking trees, and I can also set it to something really high. And that effectively breaks things because I'm exceeding the, the vertex count that 3JS allows. So I need to set this to something somewhat reasonable. That looks pretty good. So let's stick with that. Now the sweep angle controls how much the branches are sort of angled back from their parent branch. So I'm gonna turn off this gnarliness here to make this a little bit easier to see. So if I set the sweep angle really low, the branches kind of come up. And as I increase the sweep angle, those branches come way down. So it's always good to set this to something around like 90 degrees and then the gnarliness um, kind of tames that somewhat. So moving on, we have some parameters to control the length. We can vary um, the length of our branches. This adds sort of a randomness multiplication factor. And then the length multiplier controls how long a child branch is relative to its parent. 
So if we set this really low, the child branches will be small. If we set it higher, they all kind of grow uniformly together. Um, radius multiplier, same kind of thing. We can control how much the radius falls off in the child branches. So if you want a kind of a more sturdy oak tree, you can increase that. And then the taper is how much the radius um, tapers off on the length of the branch itself. Now gnarliness is the fun one. That basically adds some randomness, some kinks in the branches. So I have two parameters for that. So if we set that to zero, you can see we get very, very straight branches. Then if we increase that, the tree just gets all kind of curled up and gnarled. Um, this is one of my favorite parameters to play with. And then the gnarliness one over R, um, this is just a different factor I added in. Um, it scales inversely proportional to the radius. So um, you can kind of see the effect here that the smaller branches are more affected by this parameter, the ones with a smaller radius. And then finally, a fun parameter here is twist strength. So this twists the branches in the trunk about their own axis. So if I'm setting that to zero, everything's pretty straight. And then I can twist everything around this way or that way. Um, so this can add some nice character to the tree and help kind of also reposition the branches a bit. Now let's get into the, the geometry. So on the very bottom right here, you can see I have the vertex count and triangle count for this tree. So the section count controls how many sections make up a particular branch. So I can set this to something really low. Looks like we're getting a little crazy here. Let's turn down our number of child branches and our levels as well. This tree looks pretty bad now, but that's okay. When I get more into the theory of how this works, I'll explain this a little bit more. Um, but basically we can control the fidelity of the tree through this slider. And then we have some more sliders here to just add some randomness to the tree generation. More on these later. And um, then finally, let's talk about leaves. So I have a couple variations of leaves here, different leaf textures. So I have a ash tree, an aspen tree, and an oak tree. So I'm gonna bump our levels back up again to get some more leaves. And then we can control the, the size of our leaves. So I'm using a, a billboarding here. So you can see that each leaf texture is basically a plane. And then I can set that to be single plane, which makes it pretty obvious that these are just kind of, you know, flat planes of leaves. Or I could set it to a double. So that basically takes one plane and then another plane, then you kind of put them together at a 90 degree angle like this. So that does double the amount of leaves, but I think it adds some more nice variation to it. It doesn't look so flat. So you can also control the, the size variance between each leaf. We can control the minimum and maximum number of leaves. And of course we can change the color. Let's have some blue leaves. And then the emissive just controls sort of the base lighting for the leaves. You can also modify the opacity of the leaves. And then alpha test is just to um, control the transparency. Two more things to go through here. This is a, a fun one here is sun direction. So as you might have observed in nature that plants tend to grow towards the sun. So I've tried to replicate that behavior. So if I set this to um, something really low, this is sort of the normal state for our tree. Now let's say the sun is directly overhead. So if I increase the sun strength, you can see that all the branches are kind of forced to grow upwards. I can also set this strength to negative, which will force all the branches to point down. So this could be, uh, you can also use this as a wind direction as well. Um, I like to set it a little bit positive just to kind of give some upward lift to the ends of the trees. And then finally, to actually make this tool useful, I've added some export options here. So we can export this 3D model as a GLB. We can export it as a transparent PNG. And you can also save and load the tree parameters. So if you want to come back and work on a tree later, you can do so by loading those parameters or saving them off. So that is a really quick run through of all these parameters. Now I wanted to dive a little bit more into the theory of how this tree generator works. 
Um, and then hopefully that will give you maybe some ideas on how you can create your own procedurally generated assets for your game. So to help illustrate how this procedural tree generator works, I thought I would simplify things down a bit. So I removed all the textures, I changed the tree model to use wireframe rendering, and I stripped all the leaves off. So now we can see the actual geometry that makes up the tree. So let's boil this down a bit, let's simplify it. So I'm gonna get rid of all the branches except for the trunk. Then I'm gonna go to the geometry section and I'm gonna reduce the section count down to one section. So right now I just have my trunk and then I have one section making up that trunk. So this is how the actual branches are composed. Starting with the trunk, I basically just create a circle here and then another circle and then I connect them together with triangles. So it's really a cylinder. Now a branch is made up of these multiple cylinders connected together. And I call those cylinder sections. So I can increase the section count to two. And you can see that there's an addi additional section that's been added on, but now that's a little bit offset from the first section. So there's some parameters that control that. One is the gnarliness here. So I'm gonna set that to zero. I'm gonna set the other gnarliness to zero. Um, the twist, that's gonna be zero. So you can see that this is now kind of a, a truncated cone, like a cone with the top cut off of it. And then I can add more and more sections. So I can go all the way up to like five sections here. So you can see I'm just stacking these cylinders on top of each other. So I'm taking the total length of the branch, which is for the trunk anyway, dictated by this length parameter right here. And then I'm dividing that by the number of sections and that gives me the length of one section. And then I just go ahead and create those in a for loop. I have some other parameters here to control the number of segments along the uh, circumference of these. So right now I'm using 12 segments. I can change this all the way down to three. So you can see this looks kind of like a cell phone tower. Um, it's just a triangular prisms. So I can increase that to four, they'll become squares. Increase it to five, get a, a pentagon there, hexagon. So I have found that around 10 to 12 gives a good approximation of a circle. And then once you texture that and shade that, you really can't see the, the hard edges and corners anymore. I'm also adding some randomization in here. So you can see, I'm just kind of moving these vertices around in random directions. So that gives kind of some texture to the surface of the tree. Um, so that's one other way of modifying the geometry. So you can see right here, if I move this back and forth, some of these vertices move in and out. And then I can also vary the length of these sections relative to one another. So you can see this middle one is growing while this one is shrinking. So all of these are just things I've continually added on, iterated on to give more variation and more realism to the tree. We could also change the, the radius as well. So when you're all said and done, you got this pretty like gnarly looking thing that can look pretty close to a tree if you tune these just right. So that covers sort of the, the base branch algorithm, how I create a single branch. Now, how do we go and create branches off of other branches? So let's go back to our branch settings and let's change the levels to two. So to create these child branches, first I need to figure out the length and radius of the tree, or sorry, length and radius of the branch. And that's controlled by the length multiplier and the radius multiplier. So that takes the, the parent branch, the radius of that, multiplies it by the radius multiplier so as I increase that to one, it gets the radius of the original branch. And if I decrease that to zero, it just gets smaller and smaller. So setting that to around 0.5 looks pretty good. So every level of the tree, the branch's radius decreases by half. And then the length multiplier controls that branch length. So you can see that as the length multiplier increases, the child branches or are closer to the length of the parent branch. So how do I know where to actually place these branches? 
So I need to pick a point along that branch to determine where the origin of that child branch should be. So that's controlled by these start and stop parameters. So if I set start really low, and this is all randomly generated, so these kind of jump around. So if I set start to zero, that means a branch could start from any one of these um, sections, these segments on the tree. Or if I increase this to 0.5, that means a branch can only grow halfway up the parent branch or further along than that. And then the, the stop kind of controls the end point. So how close to the end of the branch can another branch grow? So I look at the min children and max children. That tells me, you know, I pick a random number between two and three here in this case. That tells me how many child branches I need to create off of this parent branch. And then using my start and stop parameters, I pick one of these segments to grow a branch from. So you can see I have a ring here, a ring here, another ring here. And then at this ring is where I'm deciding to grow a branch. So at the origin of that, I'm going to use that as the origin for my new branch. So you can see this center of this child branch circle is right in the center of the parent branch circle. And since the child branch, um, the beginning of it, is completely contained within the trunk, I don't need to do anything fancy here with like melding the geometry together. So that makes it much, much easier. If I wanted to make a really realistic tree where the branch kind of grows into the parent tree, you know, that's a much more difficult problem. So I'm always looking for ways to make this easier, um, sort of just create the illusion of branches being created rather than making it super realistic like a 3D modeler would. So then it's really the same process as you know, I showed you with the trunk. We're just creating a branch and we're determining what angle that branch should be based on the sweep angle here. So I can make that you know, come out at a 90 degree angle or, or point straight up. And then it's just repeating that process. So each time we recursively go down another level, you know, we're finding new segments on the child branches to grow off of. So let's look at gnarliness really quick. How does that work? So if I turn this up, you can see this causes all the branches to kind of twist and morph around. So let's look at our trunk again and see what happens when I turn up the gnarliness. So pay close attention to the this circle and then the circle above it. So you can see that as I increase this, the top circle is sort of rotating relative to the bottom circle. So it's basically picking a random direction to tilt in. And then the same thing is happening with the circle above here. Um, that just happens to be rotating in the same direction where this guy is sort of rotating along a different axis. So stacking each of these little cylinders on top of each other, I'm looking at the gnarliness parameter and I'm randomly picking an angle to sort of rotate that next section by. So if I keep stacking those different variations on top of each other, and if they're all happening in random directions, you tend to end up with something that goes in the general direction of the branch, but it's sort of twisting and turning along its way there. So I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into how this procedural tree generator works. I hope it inspires you to work on your own procedural generation projects for your games, whether it be creating assets for your games or creating new levels. And of course, I'm going to post links for the source code for this and the live demo in the description below. So be sure to check that out. So until next time, take care, everyone. Thanks for watching.